MAPS recently raised $30 million, which clearly shows that there is a huge interest in the psychedelic industry. Joining me now is Simeon Schnapper. He has been very involved in the industry, plus he has his own plant-touching venture fund called JLS. What did you make of this $30 million investment? Because MAPS is a nonprofit. So these are people that are investing money into a, a company, for lack of a better word, that they're really not going to get like the money back. Uh, yeah, first and foremost, that was such a cool moment. Like I remember uh, when it was first announced and you know, it's not an insignificant amount of capital, right? Uh, 30 million is a lot. And to see how fast it was raised uh, and who, uh, uh, <laughs> who donated, was, was phenomenal. And I think people are, you know, generally seeing that we're at this, I think it was Tim who said, you know, bending the arc of history, which is one of his bylines, Tim Ferriss, Tim who's, you know, incremental in, in helping to really feel fuel to the fire as it, as it revolved around the capstone. But, you know, I think generally uh, people want to see this succeed. And um, there's definitely other industries where nonprofits are the focus until a capital market can exist for it. So anyone donating it to that believes it in their heart, sees the mental health epidemic, sees the power and significance of these, these molecules, uh, harm reduction, uh, different modalities of, of healing people. And I would be shocked if any of the people who donated into the nonprofit are also not looking at this as, as an industry to some extent. It may have investments on companies that are mission driven, but also have a component of, you're making an investment. We expect you to get X of a return over a Y period of time. Well, there's certainly um, going to be benefits down the road. So if MAPS does get this money and is able to do these studies and then they come out at the end and they say, we did this study and here's the results that this psychedelic treatment will help PTSD, will help addiction, will help, you know, uh, treat drug resistant depression. So that certainly opens up a capitalistic opportunity for a lot of sure. other companies. So yes, if they are invested in, in other companies, then it only behooves them to have the scientific data to support the treatments. Yeah, and in fact, a lot of the scientific data is necessary for the capitalization to even occur. Uh, I mean, a lot of people say, you know, building on the shoulder of giants, maps has done so much, and this is inclusive of Beckley and Hector and a half a dozen others, to, to really put in the forefront that these medicines are medicine. And at a time in history where the magnifying glass is so attributed to mental health and it's so on everything that's happening around mental health, it just kind of is a, is a no brainer that everything around Capstone is going to create a mushrooming other opportunities. And some might be bad, some might be good, some might be for profit, some might be really cool models on cap cooperatives or have ethicists on their board. But, you know, that renaissance, which I've been waiting for for a few decades, decades is, you know, certainly upon us. And it sounds like the exit, if people are looking to exit, that's way out. That's, it's, it's certainly not like cannabis where you had people that were, you know, in and out within a, a couple of years. You know, this looks like a good three to five year commitment for most of these investors in, in, not necessarily the public companies, which you can buy and sell the stock in, but some yeah. of these, um, even if you're investing in a public company or a private company, there's, there's really not going to be that payoff for, it seems, you know, easily like three to five years. Um, well, we have, you know, in our fund, we set a horizon of three years, just because we're seeing a lot of different things, obviously with the rights to extend that. Um, I, I do think there's a misnomer that, um, you know, an exit uh, is going to happen when something goes through FDA trials, the whole long tail there, or if it's public. I think, and what we've seen is uh, opportunities for not just liquidity, um, 
but steps along the way. So, you know, we've seen companies that get acquired just at IND or a proof of concept or just the team, which you see in a lot of other industry. So I don't think it's as binary as it's going to take 10 years before approval to see. And in fact, one of our portfolio companies had a, one of the first psychedelic exits at a, a ridiculous return because of the team and just where they were at with the proof of concept. So, um, yes, to some extent, but also I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for investors along the way to make money. Um, and of course, everyone's, you know, you could fill in the blank on whatever you think the blockbuster drug could be. Um, but if you look at all these indications, which have been around since the beginning of time, and in fact, one would argue they're increasing tenfold with everything and how our world works in COVID and financial systems, um, there'll be a lot of opportunities and inflection points along the way. Well, thank you for taking the time to uh, speak with us today. I know that uh, you're busy and I know that you've, like you said, you've been around this industry for a while. You're a wealth of information. So thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today and we will stay in touch. Awesome. Thank you so much, Deborah. Have a great rest of your week.